What's up, everybody? We are back. John Delarose here. Delarose.com. That's D E L A R R O Z.com. The passing of another comic legend this week is the topic for today. And we are all about honoring these great comic legends. Uh, make sure you check out our book, Deus Volt, a Crusader Fantasy Graphic Novel. If you love the great stuff from the 60s and 70s, you're absolutely going to love this. If you love Conan, Red Sonia, this is a great book for you to continue on in the tradition of what they were doing back then. I know that Frank Thorne was a big uh, fan of Hal uh, Foster from Va uh, Prince Valiant, which I've been reading also, and definitely captures that vibe. So check it out. It's on Indiegogo in the link below, and we'll get to talk about Frank Thorne, the legendary artist. So a couple days ago, we lost uh, Frank Thorne. I actually just heard about it yesterday, um, and I actually got... Uh, a book from Hermes Press. It's called uh, The Complete Gita of Alazar. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I hope I am. <laughs> I'm sure somebody will correct me if I'm not. But I uh, I picked that up. I, I kind of got it sight unseen. I was thinking, hey, it's a Red Sonia sort of uh, knockoff sort of thing, but his own deal. And then I got into it and I was like, whoa, uh, I was not prepared for what I was reading. <laughs> and then I, then I researched Frank Thorne a little bit more and I found out he was doing all this like erotic work and all that for Playboy and all these other companies uh, throughout the 70s and 80s there. And that's uh, that's kind of where this came about from. So, uh, you know, it's it's really not a work for me and it's probably not a work for a lot of this audience. But you can't deny his skill and his craft. Even, even going through there, you just see some of the best fantasy drawings uh, that you've ever uh, seen uh, that ever existed in the comic book medium. Uh, they're, you know, like I said, they go they go a bit far uh, in some uh, instances, but it's also kind of a playful cheesecake thing. Uh, you can tell he's not taking it seriously uh, when he gets into those uh, sorts of situations, you know, which which can create fun. So if, if that doesn't bother you, maybe go check that book out. Uh, the complete uh, Gita of Alizar just came out uh, pretty recently. And in there, I was actually reading some interviews of him. They've actually got a lot of pages of interviews with Frank Thorne. Uh, seems like a very interesting guy, uh, pretty, pretty down to earth. I, n I never got to speak with him or anything like that, uh, but it's uh, but it's sad, of course, to lose a comic legend at any time. And I'm I'm just kind of rambling, but you know, it's my uh, it's my thoughts on the guy. Um, so you know, he really did a big service for Marvel by uh, bringing Red Sonia to a different level, though she existed before. I guess uh, you know Barry Windsor Smith technically created her. Uh, Frank Thorne really is the one who brought her her iconic look. Uh, her iconic series, and she's the reason that, you know, there's been movies and other comics to this day. Uh, it's really owed to him. And when you investigate back into his life and to his comic work prior to uh, sort of his move into uh, the erotic arts there, which I guess he made some good money doing, of course, right? Uh, you find that he had a storied history in comics that really doesn't get much attention. He actually started doing romance comics for Standard Comics in 1948, uh, which is pretty interesting. Uh, and apparently his style was akin to Alex Toth back at the time. And I've been trying to research, trying to find out what comics he drew, what was going on on that. Very little information on it. So this is going to be a deep dive I'm going to have to do. And, and uh, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll end up restoring some of these books and uh, and getting these out there ourselves because I love paying attention to comic book history like this. But from there, he also went on to a lot of uh, different strips. He was on a Perry Mason strip, so for the uh, for the you know newspaper strips because that was really the pinnacle of comics back then. The newspaper strips were everything. He actually did uh, Flash Gordon for a while. and uh, he was a big, big acolyte of Alex Raymond, uh, the creator of, uh, of Flash Gordon. Uh, he did Green Hornet. Uh, just a number of these different strips, and then for Gold Key Comics, he did the Mighty Samson, which is one of their one of their better uh, titles. Also, those those have been collected for, if people want to check those out. So his history, like, is really up there. He did a lot of work, and and a lot of people only remember the Red Sonia and then the Playboy magazine stuff later because he, of course, uh, he had developed as an artist by that point uh, for his style, uh, but. Uh, he really had a storied history uh, leading to that point, uh, which bears investigation if you love comic books. So it's it's a tragedy we lost him. Uh, Ninety years old is a pretty good life, though. Seems like uh, he did uh, have a have a good life, and uh, he died the same day as his wife. I guess you can't ask for more than that. Uh, you know, of course, I wouldn't want to 
outlive my wife. I don't know about you, uh, but uh, but it's it's nice. He had somebody there with him to, towards the end, and uh, yeah, uh, it's something to research and celebrate. I actually was listening to an interview of him on uh, the Comic Historians podcast. I'm going to put this link down in the description below also. I think this is a very good interview, well worth listening to. Uh, they, they definitely dive into some great history here with him. And uh, this might have been one of the last interviews he actually did in August 2019. So only, only a couple years ago, and uh, you get a good retrospective on his life with that. All right. Let me know what you think about this. Are you a big Frank Thorne fan? Uh, like I said, I'm kind of just discovering his work. So I actually did a little research into his life before making this video, which is kind of nice. Uh, it, it's cool discovering uh, new talent or, or old talent as it may be, because there's just so much awesome comic history out there that we can get into and delve into together. Uh, so we can really get a good breadth of information on our wonderful comic book medium. All right. Hit that like and subscribe button. See you soon.